Ooh, today's gonna be an interesting video. So, stacking spells is a controversial topic in the D&D community. However, the rules are really not that confusing. Today, I'll explain what spell stacking is and how it works. Welcome to Pack Tactics, where we stack spells to stack the odds. So you might be wondering, like, what am I even talking about? Well, what I mean is using the same spell repeatedly on somebody, and that can often be quite quite beneficial for that target. But Koopal, the same spell never combines! It's in the rules! Well, almost. Funnily enough, the rule you're talking about is specifically what opens up the possibility to stack spells. In the player's handbook, on page 205, in the spellcasting section, it says this. The effects of different spells add together while the durations of those spells overlap. The effects of the same spell cast multiple times don't combine, however. Instead, the most potent effect, such as the highest bonus, from those castings apply while their durations overlap. Or the most recent effect applies if the castings are equally potent and their durations overlap. For example, if two clerics cast Bless on the same target, that character gains the spell's benefit only once. He or she doesn't get to roll two bonus dice. This very clearly writes out while the durations overlap, two castings of a spell won't combine. Let's use a better example of Bless. Gator, I need your help. Come over here. Okay! If Gator casts a second level Bless and targets me in round one, and I cast a first level Bless, Bless on myself in round 5. Nothing's changed. Gator's spell is more potent, therefore only his bless will apply to me. A few rounds later, his bless will be over because a minute has passed. At that point, that's when my bless applies. This is because their durations no longer overlap. Gator's spell is gone. Wait, that's how it works? Yeah, that's how it works. That's the best way I can describe it. I've brought this rule up a few times in the past, but I've never really broken it down like this. Hmm. So stacking bless like this is not worth it, but there are, however, many spells that are worth stacking. Let's talk about probably the biggest one, Death Ward. You touch a creature and grant it a measure of protection from death. The first time the target would drop to 0 HP as a result of taking damage, the target instead drops to 1 HP, and the spell ends. If the spell is still in effect when the target is subjected to an effect that would kill it instantaneously without dealing damage, that effect is instead negated against the target, and the spell ends. Usually, this spell lasts for 8 hours, but, as you can see, the spell ends once you reach 0 HP the first time. And then there's some other stuff. Gator, I need your help again. Okay! Let's say I cast Death Ward on Gator twice by casting it right after one another. The most recent casting, let's call it Death Ward 2, while the first casting is Death Ward 1, will be the one that applies to Gator while the durations overlap. Now let's say Gator slips and falls off Castle Ravenloft. Wait, what? Ah! Ow! Death War 2 has now ended as per the spell description. Now let's drop this giant boulder on Gator. Kobold, no! <laughs> Ah, you see? Death Ward 1 saved you. All is well. This is similar to me casting Death Ward once, waiting until Gator falls down, and then casting it again. However, casting them all before he gets hurt has a couple of benefits, and I'll go over that very soon. Because the effect cannot combine, only one Death Ward ends when you reach 0 HP. Fantastic. Now, there are two big benefits of casting Death Ward in advanced. One, you don't have to be there after your friend's first Death Ward ends. You can be on another plane of existence or somewhere else. The second benefit is casting the spells in this way allows you to take advantage of rest casting. If you have spell slots left over after a long adventuring day, you could cast Death Ward with your remaining spell slots before your long rest ends. You then regain 
gain them for the next day. Basically what happens is yesterday's spell slots become power for today. This is very strong, and remember, this lasts 8 hours. If you want to know more about rest casting, link in the description. By the way, are you down for some bloody bell boots boogie? Well, I've got news for you. This is a supplement book that's heavily focused around Fey that's compatible with 5e, OSR, and quests. It even works with worlds without number! Correct, the best game. Anyways, it's got two adventures involving fey shenanigans, and best of all, fey creature generator. Oh my god, this is super cool. This generator keeps the monstrous mystery alive without sacrificing the convenience of pre-made fey tricksters. There's over 1.5 million potential fairy aristocrats. Holy moly! Yeah, it's massive. For example, the King of Cold and Cats trades Widow's Tears for new youth. The Queen of Nevermind sends enchanted seekers to find the Teeth of Crows. And John of the Lake is hungry and can only be sated by a child's dream. This is a weird book that's going to create Wild Arch Fey in seconds with a handful of D6s. I think the art really captures what the book truly is an acid trip with Fey. Watcher DM, the guys making this book, have been around for three years now creating adventures and indie RPGs, and now they want to bring their passion to a whole new level, but they need your help. Check out their Kickstarter, it's live right now. To help you optimize, if you sign up for the official Kickstarter pre-launch notification and back any of the packages within the first 48 hours of the campaign, you'll get a free copy of Tomb of the Vampire General for Quest. Put on your red caps and support weird content, it's super fun! Back to the video. A spell that works very similarly and also worth spamming if you had the money in the spell slots is Fortune's Favor. I've personally never seen this spell cast before. Anyways, here's what it says. You impart latent luck to yourself or one willing creature you can see within range. When the chosen creature makes an attack roll, an ability check, or a saving throw before the spell ends, it can dismiss this spell on itself to roll an additional d20 and choose which of the d20s to use. Alternatively, when an attack roll is made against the chosen creature, it can dismiss this spell on itself to roll a d20 and choose which of the d20s to use, the one it rolled or the one the attacker rolled. If the original d20 roll has advantage or disadvantage, the creature rolls the additional d20 after advantage or disadvantage has been applied to the original roll. Upcast third level or higher, you can target one one additional creature for each slot level above second. It usually has a one hour duration, but you can dismiss it before then, after which the durations no longer overlap. There's also another side of spell stacking which comes from the specific wording of the rules. This one will raise some eyebrows for sure. Let's look at Ray of Frost. Make a ranged spell attack against the target. On a hit, it takes 1d8 cold damage and its speed is reduced by 10 feet until the start of your next turn. The duration of this spell is instantaneous. It is literally impossible for the spell duration to overlap. That means that the 10 feet foot speed reduction actually stacks. Cool, that makes no sense! The speed reduction has a duration! True, but here's the thing. This isn't a spell. Let's look at page 5 of Xanathar's. It says, different game effects can affect a target at the same time. For example, two different benefits can give you a bonus to your AC. But when two or more effects have the same proper name, only one of them, the most powerful one, if they're benefits aren't identical applies while the durations of the effects overlap. For example, if Bless is cast on you when you're still under the effect of an earlier Bless, you gain the benefit of only one casting. Similarly, if you're in the radius of more than one aura of protection, you benefit only from the one that grants the highest bonus. However, the 10 foot speed reduction is not an effect with a proper name. Therefore, this rule does not apply. It specifically says it applies when two or more effects have the same proper name. Only one of them, blah blah blah. This is just power gaming! No one would ever allow this! 
I've played at multiple tables that do allow this, but I think it's fair to rule against this. Anyways, that's everything I know about spell stacking. I'm pretty sure there's more stuff, but I can't think of anything right now. I hope you found this interesting. I personally think stuff like this is fascinating. But anyways, end the video. I hope I earned your subscription and maybe your support on Patreon. I'm off to play video games right now. Bye-bye!